My name is Kishore Chandiramani and I work as a psychiatrist in Staffordshire, England. In this session we are going to discuss how to manage your everyday stress and it's part 2 of the series. In the last session we talked about how to look at and adjust our life goals so that we can bring down the demands placed on us. Today we are going to discuss how we can increase our coping abilities. But before we have an in-depth discussion about our coping abilities, I'd like to point out that a reasonable level of coping is given to all of us. Learning coping skills or abilities is not like learning a foreign language which has to be learned from scratch. It's a natural ability given to all of us by nature. When a lion roars or a horse gallops in the fields or when an eagle soars above the clouds they haven't done any self esteem classes anywhere they haven't studied self confidence from any book or learned it from a guide nature has given it all to them and they just use it the same principle applies to human beings as well we are given adequate abilities to deal with any situation but because of our own thinking and judgments that we make about ourselves about this world about our predicaments in life about what is normal and what is not and also about others reactions that stops us from utilizing our own abilities to the maximum from that point of view our coping abilities will be at their best when our mind is in an equanimous state equanimous means the mind is on an even keel neither too excited nor too frustrated or depressed it's an emotionally neutral zone unfortunately this is something that we don't like We don't like when nothing much is happening. We are not happy with that. As we are always seeking sensations, pleasure and happiness. But the truth is that the ability of the mind to deal with stress is compromised when it's having a pleasant experience. The mind is at its best only when it's in an emotionally neutral state which can be described as equanimity or being equanimous. From the perspective of stress management I say to people that equanimity is the tool equanimity is the path and equanimity is the goal. I have discussed the concept of equanimity in more details elsewhere as to how equanimity can be therapeutic and why it should be the goal of any therapy. There are a number of different techniques that can be employed to remain equanimous such as the principle of impermanence non-identification being non-judgmental breath awareness etc all these are topics in themselves and i have discussed them elsewhere now if equanimity is the goal and having strong emotions or having a tendency to react emotionally instantly without reflecting on issues is the main problem then we can safely say that management of our emotions can go a long way in managing our stress 
often my clients ask me doctor i haven't been through a major stress in life and i didn't experience any traumatic or abuse in my childhood then why am i having these anxiety and panic attacks and these low moods i then ask them in return if you don't wash your clothes for several months how will they look like a similar thing happens to your mind scientific research has suggested that in addition to major trauma the everyday hassles which we don't even count as stress also contribute to our stress symptoms and psychiatric illnesses in the normal course the emotional impact of these daily hassles gets worked on on a daily basis at the end of the day during our downtime but for some reason if you don't allow time for it then they keep piling up in the unconscious mind an important thing to notice here is that we generally equate stress only with the unpleasant emotions but the fact is that even pleasant and exciting experiences cause stress and need to be worked on attending a party or a wedding going on a date inviting guests over all these also lead to stress every bit of your interaction with the outside world creates a bit of stress it's like wearing neat and clean clothes in the morning but at the end of the day they get dirty and need washing frequently in the same fashion the mind also needs de-stressing every day you put your clothes in a washing machine but you need to ask yourself what are you doing to undo the impact of your everyday stress let me explain this with an example you are on your way to attend a meeting in the morning and you meet a friend on the way who tells you that a mutual friend was involved in an accident and he is in hospital but you have no time to discuss things further so you tell your friend i'm sorry to hear that but i'll call you later on to discuss it as i have to attend a meeting in 2 minutes you had a busy day and you forgot about the accident but when you go home and during your free time you may remember the accident and make a few calls you get to know that the friend is still in hospital and is able to walk with support and he'll be discharged home soon now what has happened is that you have processed that emotion but for some reason if you come home and have to attend a party in the evening so you get dressed quickly and leave now the stress related to the accident that was created in the morning didn't get worked on it goes into the unconscious mind with its emotional charge intact and joins hands with many similar experiences there now moving on to the definition of stress in terms of an emotional reaction if you understand how the mind works we can minimize its blind emotional reactions for that i want you to visualize your mind in terms of its three components thoughts emotions and actions it seems that about 80 to 90% of our thoughts are automatic they happen to us we don't create them nobody wants to have worrying or fearful thoughts they happen to us in a similar fashion about 80 to 90% of our emotions are automatic 
because they follow our thoughts as opposed to this only about 10 to 20% of our actions are automatic and the rest are under our control according to the acceptance and commitment therapy we should accept our thoughts and emotions but try to control our actions we should treat the majority of our thoughts and emotions as the weather which keeps changing you don't suspend your actions just because the weather is not good unless it's extreme in the same way we can let our thoughts and emotions be and try to perform the actions required of us and fulfill the commitments the example given here is that of a bus driver we should see all our actions and emotions as passengers who come on board and leave the bus but the driver doesn't get affected by what sort of passengers come on board and leave and focuses his attention only on the destination once we have taken charge of our actions and execute them it will have a ripple effect on our thoughts and emotions as well the mindfulness meditation also encourages us to follow the same practice that is not try to change the content of our thoughts and emotions but to change the way we relate to them seeing your mind as a guest house and yourself as the owner of the guest house can be helpful with this model in mind you can see all your thoughts and emotions as the guests who come to stay in the guest house when a pleasant person comes to stay in the guest house the owner doesn't become overjoyous and when an unpleasant person comes to stay the owner doesn't become despondent because he knows that their stay is temporary in the same way seeing all our thoughts and emotions as temporary all the time can be helpful